Did you have any problems with him? No. Okay. Other than he gave me the wrong name. And you're not gonna charge him with false? You've done that before, Morris. You've already had charges of lying to police officers. It's better to be honest. So he was in somebody's apartment or just no, on the vicinity of the apartment? Him and several of his friends were out smoking marijuana on the front porch of this of the Cloisters apartment complex. Okay. Are you high right now? He were you smoking me. marijuana today? No. He tells me he wasn't smoking. There was about seven of them. Out. I'm just going to have the nurse look at him real quick to determine that he's not under the influence. They found him today because he was smoking marijuana with his friends, and they ran all their names. At first, Morris was lying about his identity because he knew he had a warrant. You didn't take any drugs? Mm -hmm. Why are your eyes like that? I will. All slanty and red. Hey, wait. They're in. We're gonna need medical clearance. We can't accept him like this. She believed that he was under the influence of marijuana. All right, we'll be back. Thank you. So prior to him being admitted to our facility, he will require a medical clearance. So Maryville Police Department's taking him to the hospital where they're gonna conduct a drug test. So positive for yep, marijuana. It. But we knew that was gonna happen. Mm hmm Do you feel any of the effects of marijuana still? No? He was released off a of house arrest in April of this year, and then he failed to come to his court date in July. So he didn't appear in court. His mother did, his counselors did, his probation officer did, but Morris was on runaway status. Why didn't you go to court on the 24th, but everybody else did? I was scared. You were scared? Did you get a chance to talk to your probation officer prior to going to court? My probation officer, he was talking about sending me to placement. I was like, no. That's why I didn't go to court, because they said they were going to send me to placement for two years. Commitment to the Department of Corrections is the harshest punishment there is. Many of the kids that pass through LCJC are committed to placement facilities. Facilities that are equipped to rehabilitate them and help them get treatment for whatever issues may have led them down the path of trouble in the first place. I can't even control my anger. I've been angry all my life. Last time that I was here, because me and my mom got into it, and I punched a hole in the wall. But it makes it worse when you don't appear in court. Now you present it yourself as a flight risk. You understand that? You just make it worse for yourself if you run away from your problems. And I remember back, like five years ago, my grandma told me, if you keep frowning, your face gonna be stuck like that. And she won man. The last time Morris was arrested, it was for damaging his mother's home in a fit of rage. When he didn't show up for a subsequent court hearing, a bench warrant was issued. Yesterday, he was picked up on that warrant and now he'll have to face the judge. But first, he'll have to face his mother. So I can get out tomorrow? I don't know. Do you think you should? Why? I didn't even do nothing. You didn't do anything? I you didn't go to court? That. I know I was scared. You were scared? Because they said they can give me two years of placement. You should have just gone to court. I'm going to court now. Mm-hmm. You don't have a choice. They told me they took you to the hospital. You test positive for marijuana. So you've been smoking, huh? I know. I don't know. You don't know? What you smoking that for? I thought that was going to help for stress. You feel like you need something to calm you down? Then that's what you should have been telling the counselor and the therapist, if that's how you feel. This is what I'm talking about. The things you're telling me, you need to tell them. You may have a chemical imbalance. Who knows? There's medicine for that. And people are not crazy who take it. I told people they ain't gonna help. How do you know you keep going with the negative train of thought? What makes you so, what, what makes you get angry like that? Mm -hmm. Just how people do. Even when people don't do, when things don't go your way, you stay angry. That's what I'm saying. If you're in the it's gonna make it worse and worse. I can feel it right now. You keep telling yourself it's gonna get worse than it is. I keep punching walls, man. Punching it for what? Mm -hmm. Have you been praying? 
Why are you crying? I'm crying. You what? I'm going crazy. You feel like you're going crazy? I know I'm crazy. You are not. I hate to see you like this. Who do you want me to bring to court? Nobody, just me? Can I tell you something? I love you to death, but you do need some help with your anger. Some professional help. And I don't think you're crazy, but I think something inside is bothering you. What you think? You want to be with my family. You want to be with your family? <laughs> then you're going to be with your family. Wherever you go, we coming. And if they send you far, we come in there too. Okay? You feel different when I cry. I ain't cried a long time. It's good to cry sometimes, relieve stress. It's nothing wrong to cry. It's nothing wrong. Looking for Morris. Where is he at? First? Okay, great. Morris. Yep. Come on out, Morris. Talk to you. Oh, hey, Morris. How are you? Don Ruck. I'll be your lawyer for today. Let me talk to you for a second. Can we sit down here? Great. All right. You've been down this road before, right? Okay. Um, Today's hearing, the court's going to want to hear a little bit about uh, what happened. They're going to want to make a decision whether or not to release you today. What do you want to have happen? I want to get released. OK. Um, I think your mom's here. What do you think she's going to say? She's going to say she want me to come home. OK. Well, let's Unlock. do uh, counseling. Door. All right. Did you test positive for marijuana when you came in? Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. All right. Um, the court's going to ask you why you were using uh, marijuana. Do you know what? How you'd answer that? Yeah, I was going to tell them I was in a car with people. They were smoking marijuana. They let me okay. hit it. Okay. I ain't going to lie about it. And that was it. I ain't no big smoker like that. All right, what about this isn't your first time here, like we said, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, one of the concerns that the court's going to have is the uh, if the judge releases you today, that you're going to end up doing the same thing all over again. Um, tell me about some of the things that you're involved in or some of the things that we can um, talk to the court about that will Convince her that uh, it's right to let you home. Damien's yes, that's not What do you I mean, what do you do other than um, go home and sleep? Involved in any activities? In the house. You in school? Wash clothes, yeah, go to school. Okay, you're sixteen, right? Sixteen. How are your grades in school? C average. You ever been expelled? Yeah, I've been expelled. How many times? Unlock. One time. For what? I think for fighting. Me yeah, for fighting. Okay, when was when was that? Like in seventh grade. Seventh grade? Mm hmm Now, I'll tell you, one of the things that I note is that the probation department's recommending that you stay locked up. Mm -hmm. All right? So we're going to have to, um, you know, really, we have our work cut out for us. Mm -hmm. We have our work cut out for us. Um, what are your plans with your life? Go to school, get my education. Oh, finish school first, right? Yeah, finish school, get my education, go to college. Okay, what do you want to do? Real estate. All right. Do you live with your mom? Yes. Anybody else live in the house with you? My two sisters, my little brother and her boyfriend. Where's your dad? He's there in Griffith. Do you see him often? Yes. How often? Not like that, but probably every two weeks. Okay. Does he know you're here? Yeah, he do. She told me when she visited me. Okay, is he, is he okay with you being here, or is, does he think you should come home too? Yeah, he think I should come on, him and my grandma. Everybody do. They don't even want me in here. Okay, how long have you been here? Since Saturday. Okay. Last time you were here, how long did you stay here? A week and a day. Eight days. I just want to go home. What, um, the judge lets you go home, 
you going to be able to tell her that you're not going to do anything that's going to bring you back here? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Anything else you can tell me that you think might help us out? Four in one van. Tell her she can give me house arrest. You, you want can. house arrest? Mm-hmm. You want to be on house arrest? I want to be on house arrest. Why would you want to be on house arrest? Usually you have somebody that... So I can get my stuff together. So. So I can prove that I'm a good kid, so I won't be outside smoking marijuana. Do you think Even you if I do get out, I'm not finna smoke marijuana no more. Plus cigarettes. Do you think you're addicted to marijuana? Mm-hmm. Okay. You addicted to cigarettes? Mm-hmm. All right, so you can stop if you want to. Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay. I need you to make sure you speak nice and loud. Mm-hmm. And all, you know, the lady you know. told me to. She like when I he was speaking loud. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So let me get this straight. You want to be on house arrest. Yes. You want the judge to release you from detention but place you on house arrest. And you're gonna have an ankle bracelet, yeah. and restrictions on when and where you, where you can where go. Be at, Why do you think you need to be on house arrest? So I can prove that I'm not gonna mess up no more. I'm not gonna smoke. I'm not gonna miss school. Well, I don't miss school. I'm not gonna miss counseling. So they can just know where I'm at, at home or at school, or, or my counseling, or my probation officer. One of the things that's useful, in my experience, is to come to the court and say, yes, I did wrong, and I need help with certain things, kind of yeah, like what you're doing. doing. All right, what types of things do you think you need help with, apart from being on house arrest? You mentioned counseling. Are there anger. Other... Okay, your anger? Yes. Tell me about your anger. I got a temper problem, anger problem. Give me an example of... Like stuff, like, like we be at the house and my mom made me mad, I hit the wall. I and when you say hit the wall, are you talking about punch. tapping it, or are you talking about punch. letting punch loose on you ever hurt yourself doing that? You ever hurt the wall? Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's marks on the wall from you. Mm-hmm, wall in the house, downstairs. Right. Have you ever gotten any help for that? Uh, counseling, anger management. But when I didn't do the anger management yet, I just had counseling. Okay, well here's the question. You've already had anger management, you've already had counseling. Why hasn't it helped? I don't know. My mama says she think I probably need some medicine, I don't know. Do you think you do? I think I do, yeah. I mean, when you get counseling, does it help you? A little bit, it helps a little bit, but not like that. Cause they're not solving the problem. So what's the problem? Mm, I just can't stop him stuff. Mm, little stuff make me mad. Is that why you use drugs? Yeah, that, that help, but I don't, I don't do it just to be fitting in and make it like, um, just to smoke it just fit in. I just do it because it made me feel better. You involved in any gangs? No. Never been? No. Ever tell anybody that you were? No. Okay. Okay, my friend. Well, whatever the court decides, what I'm going to yeah. tell you is I don't want you reacting out loud in court. If the oh, judge yeah. says you need to uh, stay locked up, and I want you to get angry, uh, punching the wall, punching me, oh, no, jumping on the that. table, mm-hmm. none of that kind of stuff. Whatever it is, we'll deal with it. We'll move forward, okay? okay? We'll do our best to present all the evidence that will get you released. But if not, I want you to control yourself and be a man, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll see you in there in a few minutes. Nice. Take care. Nice meeting. All right, nice meeting you too. Hang out here for a few minutes. I'm going to talk. So. Unlock. Please had to catch up with you. Door you couldn't. Is denied. 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 Door. You know you had a court here. Didn't want to come. Go. I was scared. They said it would be too easy. Uh, place me. So you run away. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna recommend that you go home. I'm gonna try to see, keep you staying here so we can work something out. I'm telling you, it's not gonna work, sir. Okay, come on. It's something's gonna work. Let's go back to your office. You're not gonna run around like a chicken with your head cut You've been gone for almost a month. No, I won't. That's what I want to see, though. I did come on in my You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. All right, please be seated. Your name, ma'am? Angel Mosley. And are you the child's mother? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, Mr. Ruck, were your clients, was your client advised of his rights? He was, Judge. Does he understand what his rights are? Yes. Any questions about them? None. All right, we're here this morning for a few reasons, one of which is he was arrested on a bench warrant that was issued from this court um, on July 24th. Magistrate Miller issued the warrant for failure to appear 
on a modification of his probation. Is that right? That's correct, Judge. In addition to that, I understand that when he came into this detention facility, he was um, thought to be um, high on marijuana and was in fact taken to the hospital to determine whether or not he was clear um, or at least sober to, to stay in this facility and it was determined that he in fact tested positive for marijuana. Um, this morning, Mrs. Guzik, do you have anything besides what I've just recited? No, because I just had the modification of information for me also. All right. Mr. Fleming is present, the probation officer. Um, Mr. Ruck, how do you want to proceed this morning? Do you want to uh, address the issue of his bench warrant and why he failed to appear and then go into the modification, or what's your pleasure? That's fine, Judge, and then I think we can then also address what the appropriate uh, placement is moving forward for him. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Do you have any witnesses? Yes, Judge. I would call Morris at this point to the stand. All right, Morris, have a seat up here, please. Go on up there. Tell us your name, young man. Morris Burdett, Jr. Where do you live, Morris? 5999 Grant Place. Who do you live there with? My mother, Angie Moe. Do you have any brothers or sisters? My brothers and sisters, Alante Johnson, Alana Johnson, and Dorian Burdett. Okay. Does your father live there? No. Where does he live? He lives in Griffith. Okay. Morris, you were supposed to be in court back on July 24th. Do you remember that? Yes. You weren't here in court on July 24th, were you? No. Why not? Because I was scared they were going to give me two years of placement. You were scared? Yes. Why were you scared? They were going to give me two years of placement. Well, how did you think that not showing up for court was a better option than showing up for court? I don't know. Did you know that a bench warrant would be issued for your arrest? Yes. I just, just want to go home and get due house arrest. And, and how was it that you thought that not coming to court would be a better way to keep you home? Mm, I don't know. Okay. Well, let me ask this question. Um, is this something that's going to happen again? No, sir. Why not? I'm not, when I, if I get out, I'm not going to do it no more. I'm going to go to court, and I'm going to go to counseling and do what I got to do. Okay. Morris, what is the, um, the root of your problem, do you believe? Uh, anger. Anger problem. And you had told me that one of the things that you tend to do is punch holes in walls. Yes. You also told me that one of the things that you've been going through already is anger management, correct? Yes. Do you believe that that's helped you? Yeah, a little bit. Well, what do you mean a little bit? Be more specific. I, I improve. I don't argue with my mom no more or my little brothers and sisters. I don't punch holes anymore. I'm changing. OK. Do you respect your mother? Yes. Do you think she'll say that? Yes. Morris, if the court were to release you today, despite the fact that the reason you're here is because you didn't return to court when you were told to return to court, how is it that you can assure us that the next time there's a court hearing that you'll be back? I'll be back. I'm going to show up to court. She's going to make sure I show up to court. Who? My mom. Okay. Do you think that there that it would be appropriate to have the court place restrictions on you in terms of um, where you can go and what you can do and who you can see? Yeah. Why so? Mm. Can you say that again? I don't understand. Well, you had indicated before that one of the things that you thought was a problem for you was the influence of other people, friends, things like that, that led you to smoke weed and that restrictions through either your mom or through the court would be something that you thought would help you. Is that what you told me? Yes. OK. What type of restrictions or rules would you like to have either the court or your mother put in place if you're released today? I still don't understand. Do you think you should be on house arrest? Yes. Why? 
so they can know where I'm doing and where I'm at and know where I'm going. Okay, well, why do you think that's necessary? So I could just see where I'm at, see, what, like, if I'm doing bad things or good things, so I could just be at home so they can know where I'm at. Okay. So, Morris, is what you're saying that you're willing to follow your mom's rules and the court's order that you come oh, back yeah. to court if necessary. Yes. And to prove how genuine that is, you're saying the court could even put an ankle bracelet on me, correct? Yeah. All right. Are you in school? Yeah. Where are you in school at? Very high. What grade are you in? A sophomore. Okay. How are your grades? C average. You failing any classes? Mm. I don't know. I, I got to go to school. If I know. And when were you last in school? In June. Okay. When are you supposed to start school again? Wednesday. This Wednesday? Yes. If you're released today, is your plan to go to school? Yes. Judge, that's all I have right now. Mrs. Guzik? Morris, when you didn't come to court on July 24th, did your mother come? Yes. Mm -hmm. Were you home when she left to come to court? No. Where were you at? I was outside. Outside where? Down the street up in Hickory. When did you leave the home before July 24th? I left on the 23rd. OK. Did, did you have your mom's permission to leave? No. Did she tell you not to leave? No. Have there been other times when you leave the home without your mom's permission? Yes. How many other times have you done that? Well, I don't do it often. I just, I can go outside when I want to go outside. Well, are there times when you don't come home all night? Sometimes. Where do you go when you do that? Down the street, like five houses down to my friend's house. Does your mom always know where you're at? Yes. Does she want you down there? Yes. She wants you down there? No, she don't, she don't care. Have there been times when mom said come home and you haven't done that? No. So if you leave the home and you're just gone, your mother doesn't care? Yeah, she cares. And you have her permission to be away from the home? Yeah. Yes. Did your probation officer ever talk to you about that? No. No? When you go to school, do you go to school every day? Yes. Your attendance is perfect? Yes. You're never missing without permission? No. Is that what your school records show? Yes. Judge, can I have a brief moment with my client? Go ahead. Okay. Let's be honest. Okay. I'm telling you, she's got all the records from your school. Mm -hmm. Listen to the question and answer it honestly. Mm -hmm. Don't make it worse. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, Mrs. Guzik? Uh, no, Judge. All right, Mr. Ruck? Morris, l let me ask you a question. I know this is a environment that there's a lot of stress in here, but I want to make sure that you understand the question and that you answer it mm -hmm. truthfully. Okay. Are there times when your mother gives you rules about when you are supposed to be at home and you disobey those rules? Can you say that again? Are there ever times when your mother says, don't go out overnight or come home at a certain time and you come home late? Yes. Are there times that that happens? Yes. How often does that happen? It happens often. Pretty often? Yes. Okay. Why, Morris, um, does that happen? I just can't stay in the house all day. I just I can't stand still. I got to go outside. Okay. How is it, Morris, then, that the, the court should listen to your word today that you're not going to uh, run away, and you're going to follow your mom's rules, and you're going to follow the court's rules, when, by your admission, you have trouble doing that. How can you assure everybody in here today that that's not going to happen again? Put me in the house or... That's why you were saying you needed that? Yes. Okay. Morris, do you also 
need help with dealing with anger management? Yes. Do you want help dealing with anger management? Yes. Do you want help dealing with the um, relationship uh, between you and your mother and the yes. authority that she exerts over you? Yes, sir. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. Anything else? No, Judge. All right, thank you, Morris. You may have a seat next to your attorney. Next witness. Judge, I would call uh, Morris's mother, Angel, to the stand, please. Tell us your name, please. Angel Mosley. Miss Mosley, what is your relationship to this young man here, Morris? Um, I'm his mother. Okay. And you heard him testify today, correct? Yes. Um, Angel, were you in court on July 24th, 2008? Yes. Was your son in court on July 24th, 2008? No. Did he know he had to be there that day? Yes. Why wasn't he? He was afraid that they were going to keep him for two years in placement. Yeah, until you, he was 18. Someone told him that. Okay. Um, did you talk with him about that? Briefly. Um, I didn't want to touch on it because I didn't want to get him shook up about it. I just wanted him to come to court. Okay. And when he didn't, what were the circumstances surrounding his uh, failure to appear that day? Um, I didn't see him after that. Before then, he would... Uh, we never really had a major issue with curfew, but... After that court date, I didn't see him. Other, his brothers and sisters had seen him, and um, I believe he was sneaking to the house when I was at work, but he was basically like a runaway. So prior to July 24th, were there ever any other times when Morris has had court dates or court obligations that he's disappeared or failed to appear for? Never. So you believe that the only reason he failed to appear on July 24th was his mistaken belief that if he showed up, he'd go to jail until he was 18? Correct. Uh, was that unusual type of behavior for him to disappear and not appear for a court date? Yes, because he never disappeared and not appeared for court. Yes, that was unusual. Does Morris have a problem with um, authority and respecting the rules of the house like he talked about? Um, he has a problem with anger. Tell me about that. Um, I don't know exactly what triggers it, but he gets so frustrated with, I believe, himself, um, basically about education because he was behind, and we didn't, you know, he had a learning disability, uh, and we didn't find out until later, and I believe it really, really bothers him, but running is not the solution. Well, he's 16 years old, correct? Correct. Um, a lot of 16-year-olds certainly have problems in school. Exactly. Um, get angry. Yes. But not a lot of them punch holes through walls. Yes. So how is it with uh, Morris that what needs to be done to help him? Um, actually, I don't know what needs to be done. I, I don't know. What help do you think we can... I really can't say. I can't say what helps. Um, we had a discussion yesterday when I visited him. That's the first time I've seen him cry in about two years. But as far as what helps, I know that there is a problem, and he does need some help. Does he recognize it's a problem? Do yes, he does. Yes. Why do you say that? Um, we discuss it, and he does admit that there is an anger problem. Yes. Do you think he has a drug problem? Mm. I know that he does smoke. As far as this being a problem, I can't say that. I found out that he was smoking. He hasn't come. I haven't, I can't say that I've seen him high, you know, or anything like that, so. Where is his father? He lives in Griffith. Okay, is there a relationship between Morris and his father? Um, his father tries, Morris is at the age now, kind of like he doesn't want to be bothered. By his father? Yes, with, with adults, I believe. It's, he wants to do his own thing. Okay. If the court were to decide that um, Morris need not be locked up any longer, would you be able to and willing to have him released to your custody? 
I'm always willing, but I just wonder if that's what's best for him. Always willing. Well, do you think it's best to keep him locked up? Here, no, I don't. Because yesterday he expressed that it seems like the walls are closing in on him. And that's just not a good feeling. Well, let me ask you then the question, because I'm not sure that you answered it. Okay. Are you in a position where you're willing to, if the court releases him, take him home then? Yes. And do you think that it's appropriate that he go home with you? I'll try. That's what you want to do? I'll try. You think home is the best place for him right now? I can't say what the best place is for him. I just know that there's a problem and he does need help. I can say that. I can't say what the best place is for That's him. That's what I'm trying to get at. Because sometimes I ask the question, you want to take your child okay. home? Absolutely, yes. Some people say absolutely not. I mean, I always, I definitely want him to be home with me, but I do know that there's a problem and he needs help. I do know that. So I can't say where the best place is for him. I don't think LCJC is the best place. Okay. No, I don't. So you shouldn't stay here. You're willing to do your best. Yes, and, I am. And you're asking for help. Yes, I exactly. That's all I have. Yeah. This is Guzik. Ms. Mosley, mm -hmm. when Morris didn't come home because he had a court date, Yes. how long was he absent from home at that time? What do you mean? How long? How many days did was he have? After? after the 24th? Yes. It was days. Um, my other children told me they saw him. I went to the place where they supposedly saw him at. I was never able to get in touch with him. Other, everybody saw him except me. Okay. So you didn't know where he was at? <clears throat> I wasn't sure. No, ma'am. Okay. And he certainly didn't have, have your permission. Did no, ma'am. Okay. Have there been other times when he's left the home without your permission and you didn't know where he was at? Leave, yes, but not spend the night, okay. no. Okay. No. He, he never had a problem with curfew, no. And you've told Mr. Rock several times that you feel that Morris needs some services through the court, some yes. counseling or something. Yes. Did the court attempt to provide him with counseling in the past? Yes. Okay. And didn't he actively have counseling in place during the last few months? Yes. Okay. Did he, was he meeting with his counselor in July? Yes. Okay. Was that through the circle around families? Uh, but yes. Okay. It, um, actually, it was a couple services. So it was two, a, th a counselor, a therapist, and um, two mentors. How long has he been meeting with people from circle around families? I want to say a month. Okay. Maybe t it hasn't been three months. Okay. Did he meet with them in June? Yes. I believe. Do you know Miss Sanchez, Melissa Sanchez? Yes. Okay. Is that one of his counselors? Yes. Okay. So if Melissa Sanchez having problem contacting your your son, that's true or not true? You said is she what? Would it be true or not true that M Melissa Sanchez has had a problem contacting your son? In the beginning, yes, yeah, she did. But at the, he met with her more than any of them. Okay. Right. Has she made a lot of contact to your home through telephone calls and Morris hasn't been available? Honestly, she wasn't available either at the beginning. She would say certain times she wouldn't make it. How many times did that happen? For sure, it happened twice because I called off from work okay. at How the many, beginning. Okay. How many times did Ms. Sanchez miss him? Make, make an appointment with him and he wasn't available? Um, I want to say two or three. Okay. Does he have a job? No, ma'am. Is he in school right now? No.
So there would be no reason he should not be available. Exactly. A couple of times she came and she would call and I told her that she should just go ring the doorbell because he would be there and would be asleep. Okay. Mm-hmm. And would he come to the door for her? Yes. Okay. He liked her. Okay. Not the others. Okay. I have no further questions, Judge. Anything else, Mr. Roth? Not of this witness, Judge. Thank you, ma'am. You may have a seat back there. Thank you. Mrs. Guzik, um, I, I'm wondering if you want to question Mr. Uh, Fleming about uh, the petition. He filed a, a modification petition on June 6th. Yes. Alleging that um, Morris had been gone from the home since June 3rd, which right. was the reason for his filing of the modification. Uh, we didn't get into the, to the actual details of the modification, but perhaps he could um, enlighten the court about what his recommendations are today and whether or not um, those are recommendations pending the modification hearing um, or what exactly his recommendations are. I was going to do that, Judge, so Mr. Mr. Fleming. Mr. Fleming, please state your name for the record. Probation Officer Gordon Fleming. And you're a probation officer for the Lake Superior Court Juvenile Division? Yes, I am. And as such, are you assigned to uh, supervise Morris Burdett? Yes, I am. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, he was placed on official probation on April the 4th of okay. this year. Uh, as part of his probation, Mr. Fleming, was he ordered to uh, attend counseling? Yes, he was. And was that counseling set up by the court? Yes, it was. And what were the counseling services to be provided to Mr. Burdett? Uh, anger management, family counseling, individual counseling. And who were those services being provided by? And those services were being provided through Circle Around Family. Okay. And have you been keeping track of how that counseling's going? Yes, I have. What have you been told about his counseling? The last report that I got that Circle Around Family had seen him, they reported that uh, uh, the counseling was going well when they were able to give him counseling. There was an issue with uh, him being available for counseling. And the report that I received, and I wrote my probation hearing officer's report, was that uh, on three occasions uh, he was unavailable for counseling and that also uh, he had failed to meet with his mentors. And those issues revolved around him not being at home at the time. Okay. And did Circle Round families indicate that they were attempting to contact him? Yes. And were those contacts successful? Uh, no, they weren't. Okay. Now, you've heard uh, talk about Morris not being at home when he's supposed to be. What do you know about that? Well, on June, on June the 3rd, I received a phone call from his mother that uh, he had uh, left home. And uh, on June the 6th, when I filed my petition for modification, he had not returned home at that time. Okay. I filed a modification. We set the modification hearing. The magistrate set the hearing for July the 24th. And at that hearing, he failed to appear. Mr. Fleming, did you ever tell Morris that you were going to have him sent away to a placement for two years? No. OK. Do you know if anybody from the court ever told him that? Not to my knowledge. OK. Did you ever hear Magistrate Miller tell him that? Not to know he hasn't. OK. What would you like to see in the interim prior to a modification happen with Morris today? I, I would recommend to the court that he remains detained. Okay. Yeah, to what goal? Until we have the modification. And uh, I had really, at his modification, recommended that he go on intensive probation. But uh, he's been gone for over well, around a month now that uh, we're going to staff this for placement. So you think that perhaps intensive probation will not be appropriate for him no, at this time? No, I believe it's not appropriate for him. I have no further questions for Mr. Fleming. Mr. Rock? How long have you been at this, sir, as a probation uh, officer? 11 years. In the 11 years, have you, you, you seen a lot of kids who, when they're given services, it takes them a while to adjust before they uh, kind of get on board and start improving? Yes, in some instances. 
Now, with respect to Morris, you had previously recommended that he undergo anger management, and you had recommended family counseling and counseling services, yeah. correct? Yes. What was the reason that you ordered those services? Well, this was based upon his case history, which was the anger, and most of the anger had happened within the household and with his mother. And uh, she was having a hard time controlling him and reasoning with him. So he had problems following um, rules of the household, is that right? At that time, yes. Respecting authority? Yes. Getting angry uh, in response to authority? Yes. Okay. Um, so when did the counseling and when did the uh, anger management classes begin? Well, I don't know the exact date uh, when it began. It was ordered in April. And of 2008, correct? Yes. So we're talking about three or four months ago. Yes. <laughs> he missed three of the... Uh, counseling sessions. How Three. many did he attend? I'm not sure. More than 10? No. More than five? Uh, I doubt that. Okay. Sir, if... I, I think I understand your testimony to be that because Morris is not uh, as available or participating with these services to the extent that you think appropriate, that he should just remain locked up. Well, I'm basing that upon him running away from home, his mother not knowing where he is. His, I personally have seen him with an older group of young men, uh, and I've put him in my car and taken him home. Uh, he has failed a couple of drug tests. Uh, Morris has told me on several occasions that uh, whatever I do is not going to work, and I've explained to him that whatever I do, I'm going to attempt to, to help him. Well, that's my point, sir. Yes. Is, isn't it a, true, taking a step back, that the problems he's having that are leading you to recommend he remain detained, not following through with the counseling or being difficult to get a hold of and not completing the anger management classes, are more symptoms of the problem that caused you to order those services to begin with? Well, not only that, Morris is a type of young man, and I've known him for a little while now, when he gets an attitude, he will just walk out of the house and his mother won't know where he is. Uh, I, I truly believe Morris won't show up for his next hearing. Do oh. you believe that with a court order today that tells Morris, and based on what you heard Morris testify to today, that he uh, is going to avoid going through the therapy and the counseling that you said he needs? You say he's going to avoid it? Do you think he'll avoid it? Well, I really don't know if he will, but he has avoided it on several occasions. Sir, and, I'm sorry. finally, isn't this just a case of a young man who's got some serious issues? You recognize those. You order the services. And his rough start, so to speak, with the services is simply evidence of the problem that caused you to order those services to begin with. Why don't we let it, let it work itself through some more? Let, let's let this counseling take hold, these um, the anger management take hold before we say the answer is just to keep him locked up. Well, that would be fine, but Morris has tended to befriend some young men. One, for instance, is across the street who was shot the other day in a drive-by shooting. And uh, his associates and the young people that he's been associating with, I believe it's safer for Morris to be here for us to work with Morris. So now it's an issue of him being safe? Well, that's one of the issues, yes. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. Anything else, Mrs. Guzik? Mr. Fleming, just to reiterate, though, the, the main issue is you fear that Morris won't be present for future hearings. Absolutely. And that's based on his past uh, behavior. Yes, Absolutely. I just have one question that doesn't have anything to do with this. Has he had a psychological evaluation? Yes, he has. It's been completed. It's been completed. Okay. No further questions, Judge. Thank you. You may have a seat back there. Very good. Then uh, this morning, my um, only decision is whether or not he should remain detained or release pending staffing of his case before the probation department to determine what the next steps will be. Will he be released as originally recommended on intensive probation back at home with services or uh, perhaps placed um, depending on what the probation department recommends? Um, what is your argument today, sir, about release or detention, if you have any? Judge, I mean, <laughs> Again, I, I, I think this is what came clear at the very end of the questioning of the probation officer. This young man has a series of problems that were thankfully identified by this court. 
and there were some recommendations that were put in place and some services that were ordered to deal with those problems three months ago. Those services just began to address the very problem that led him to be non-compliant in part with those services. My guess is this isn't the first time we've seen somebody resist going to counseling and resist going to anger management. Um, I think those are issues that need to be addressed through that process. Um, nothing has changed dramatically that says now he's a flight risk. Um, he's here today. Um, I think by all intents and purposes, he certainly understands what happened. His mother understands what happened and the significance of it. And I think he, he understands that he needs to be back. And more importantly, this young man wants help. He's 16 right now. And if he doesn't get that help, I think that, you know, that, that things can certainly unravel for him even more. Um, what good will it do to keep him locked up at this point? What additional good will that do? Um, judge, for those reasons, I would um, request that he be released today with um, the restrictions that he says he needs. Um, this is a man with problems that need help. This is a man who puts holes through the wall when, um, when, when the going gets tough. His mom's here to say that they think he's, she's willing to at least do her best to um, take him home today. Thank you. Mrs. Guzik? Judge, there's several criteria the court has to <laughs> assess uh, in determining whether or not this young man should remain detained here today. One is whether or not he's a danger to himself or the community. Certainly, the testimony we've heard today would indicate that Morris is a danger to himself. He's out on the street. His mother doesn't know where he's at. This is for days at a time. He's not employed, so I don't know how he's managing to remain out on the street. He's using drugs. He's testing positive for marijuana as he comes into the juvenile center. Mr. Fleming's testified that he's associating with people that seem to be very dangerous. One friend was injured in a drive-by shooting the other day. Uh, certainly, he is uh, participating in actions which are endangering his life. Uh, the court also has to assess whether or not he's unlikely to appear for subsequent proceedings. Uh, by absenting himself from uh, his hearing on July 24th, uh, 2008, he's proven that he is unlikely to appear for subsequent proceedings. He knew he had to come to court. His mother told him he had to come to court. Uh, there's some story he was afraid that he was going to be locked up for two years, but nobody from the court told him that. So I'm, I'm not real sure about that story either. That's Morris's reason for not coming. I'm not so sure that that's true uh, because Morris has a tendency not to tell the truth about a lot of things. Uh, for the very reasons uh, cited by Mr. Fleming, I would ask that he remain detained. All right. Um, Mr. Fleming, well, how often does your department staff cases on an individual basis, or do you have a certain date each week or each month that you do that? Each week on Mondays. Each week on Mondays. So if I order that you staff this case, it will be done uh, Monday the 25th? Um, after listening to all the arguments and assessing the witnesses, I would say that uh, the mother, Mrs. Mosley, certainly you know, gave her heartfelt testimony. And I could feel for her as a parent when she said she's willing, always willing, and that's what a good mother does, is, is never gives up on your child. But I also think uh, what she didn't go on to say, which I think she probably would admit to, is that he's a little bit of a handful for her and that um, you know, she would like to know and, and testify and swear and, uh, before this court under oath that, she, that he would be in court. But frankly, I don't think she can guarantee the court that he would be here. Uh, more importantly to me is that he's out on the street doing some very dangerous things. Um, Mr. Uh, Fleming testified that one of his friends is currently in the Lake County Jail, um, a victim or involved in a drive-by shooting. And if um, we all know that when you lay down with dogs, you get fleas. And so at some point, this is going to happen to you. Um, if you continue to do that. And, um, you know, when this petition was filed, he was gone for three days at that time. And since then, he's been pretty much gone from home since July 24th. And today is August 18th. So this young man has been living on the street or between friends or doing something that he shouldn't be doing, all because he was afraid to come to court. And, and I'm sure he was afraid. But um, at the same time, he didn't appear for court. He endangered himself and maybe others. Uh, and for those reasons, the court is going to order that he remain detained pending his next hearing because there's an unlikelihood that he will appear for a subsequent hearing. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to order that this matter be staffed by your department um, for disposition. And uh, we'll come back to court. Uh, the date is, you know, if they do it on the 25th, I'm assuming you can have your report 
ready by the 29th, which would be Friday. I don't know if you can have it done that quickly. The following um, Monday is a holiday, so we wouldn't be in court. So the next date we could possibly be in court would be Friday, September 5th. Um, would that date, uh, would you have a report ready, Mr. Fleming? Your Honor, we would have the report ready, but uh, we would need time to send out the, I see. the, the packages uh, and to get a reply, which would take a, another week. So what are you thinking? September 8th is a Monday. Is that enough time? It would, it would, you know, if you do it Monday the 25th, it would give you about a week, almost two weeks. Is that yes. enough? Yes. We'll try. All right. Then I'll set this matter for disposition on Monday, September 8th, 2008, at 9 a.m. Are there any questions? No, Judge. No, no, Judge. All right, then this hearing's adjourned. Thank you. Okay, come on, Morris. your mother? I'll see you at 1.30. You're right. You're going to call me out in my place. Okay, it's okay. I'll see you at 1.30, all right? All right. And you're going to be all right. I'll be here all day, every day. Okay. Love you. Love you, too. Hang in there. I got a feeling they're going to send me off to Companion, but I'll probably go home on house arrest. That's what I hope. But it's whatever. If I go to Companion, I'm going to do my time and then go home. So are you nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous. What are you nervous about? I'm nervous about what they're going to say. If they're going to take me to Companion. What is Companion? That's a placement. Okay, so can you say placement? Because I don't think anybody knows what. Oh, yeah. It's a placement. That's for Cherville. Cherville. Um, so can you tell us again, um, what are the possibilities of what might happen to you tomorrow? What might the judge do? The judge might send me the placement. Or well, she probably might give me housework. Because my mom wants me to come back home, my daddy, my therapist. Are y'all? Mm -hmm. It's up to the judge. What would she do? And again, what are you hoping for? I'm hoping for house arrest. Cool. Um, so, what's your last year hearing? Uh, your PO seemed to be against you. Mm -hmm. um, tell me how you feel about him. <sighs> Start out with like my my PO. Um. My P.O., I don't think he liked me. Because last, my P.O., he told me I wasn't going to the house. I mean, placement. And the next thing you know, some weeks later, he trying to send me the placement. So he lied to my face and my daddy face. So I probably do go to placement. So tell me about your P.O. What, what do you think of him? Um, he cool sometimes, but I don't like him. Why not? Because um, he... He lied. He trying to send me off the placement for a little reason, for a warrant. And that ain't nothing. I'm curious, do you think that um, there's anything good about placement for you? Yeah, I don't know. I ain't no being. It probably is, though. We got school. Troy, I work on my GED. So tell, my me, tell me, placement would be good. It is better than hell. So tell me, start out with, I. Placement might be good for me because... Placement might be good for me because I get to work on my GED. I still go to school. Probably work on my anger. And I get home visits. Dude, you don't have anger problems, do you? Yes, I do. Why? I don't know. I got anger problems because it's like I build, I hold it in. Like, if I cry, I don't cry. I hold it in. My anger builds up every time. And sometimes I let it out on somebody else. Sometimes I let it out on the wall. And I just don't be having anger around some people. So how have you been doing here? I've been doing all right a little bit. But it ain't helping here. My anger ain't helping here. What do you uh, what do you want the judge to know? Like, if you could talk to the judge personally, you know, just sit down with her and say, "What's up?" What would you want her to know about you? 
Who will want the judge to know that I ain't no bad kid. I need to be home with my family because my sister's real sick right now. And that give me another chance. Trust me that I'm going to do better. And I'm going to go to school. And I ain't going to run away from the house no more. What's wrong with your sister? Oh, she having women problems, crown stuff. So are you kind of like the, uh, are you the only guy in the house? No, I got a little brother. My little brother named Lante, he 14. Mm. Does he look up to you? Yeah, he do. If you could, uh, Guess what you think the judge will order for you. What do you think it'll be? Placement. She'll, yeah, she'll, she'll order me placement. And that could be bad or could be good? Well, uh, I've been thinking about it because I was thinking it was going to be bad because I never been before, but I heard about it. So it'll probably work out. Probably work. Who'd you hear about from? The people from the placement. And other kids, DOs, even my PO, but I wouldn't believe in him anyway. Okay, so how, how do you think you'll react uh, if they put you in placement? Well, I'm gonna try to do good. I ain't just gonna walk in there with no positive, like, no bad attitude. I'm gonna walk in there with a positive attitude. I ain't gonna try to fight nobody. Because if you fight, you come back here. So, I'm going to try. I'm going to at least try. Do some, do some months and go home. So I guess there are a couple options of placement. Do you know about that? No. Yeah. I, um, the question I have here is, uh, if you have to go to placement, which placement would you want to go to? Have you heard about uh, those different yeah. kinds? There are different kinds, but... I'm sorry, there are different kinds of what? There are different kinds of placements, but they far away, like some in different states. It's mostly some in Indiana, too, but they're like three hours away. They was trying to send me to Pennsylvania. But I was like, no, I'm just going to go to Companion and Sherryville, because it's closer. I get home visits. Do you think you'll have any say in it? Mm, yeah, I had a say in it. But... Uh, they won't hear my question, so... What, what is yeah, I probably have a say up in Campania. Probably. They, 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 I asked the lady, I, don't, I told her I don't want to go. She wrote it down on the paper. She was like, all right. And then I told the dude from Pennsylvania uh, up in Willows Glen Academy. I told him I don't want to go. He said he going to talk to my PO about it. But the other lady from Sherville Companion Placement, she said she ain't say she was going to talk to my uh, PO. So, I don't know what's going to happen. Is that something you'd ask your lawyer to ask the judge for a specific placement? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't, probably can't ask my lawyer. But I ain't got no lawyer. Yeah, you do. I do. Well, yeah. Are, you, are you, you talking about a lawyer like... Yeah, like the guy who's going to be sitting next to you tomorrow. Oh, yeah, morning. I know what you're talking about. And yeah. I ain't got no lawyer like... To pay for him. But he on my side, though. He was on my side last time I was going to go home and tell my P.O. lied about something. What'd your P.O. lie about? My P.O. lied about me and my friend. He had, it was a drive-by shooting down somewhere in Gary, and I live all the way in Mirrorville. He put that in there, like, and I was like, what they got to do with me? I stay all the way in Mirrorville. The people that he think the people that did it is coming after me. I'm like, I don't know the people that ain't never seen me before, so how they gonna come after me? And we went on from right there. Yeah, I don't remember him talking about that. No. You said, you said that in court? Yeah. Because your friend got shot, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Right. Why do you think, why do you think he lies about you? Because when I first met him, I think, because he think I'm a thug, a game maker, he don't like me. I mean, they been acting like that all the time, my P.O. He been acting like that ever since I met him. I already know he been trying to send me the placement. 
And when we was in court, the judge asked him, did anybody tell him he, he going to place me for two years? He said no, but he did tell me. That's why I didn't go to court. He said I'm going to place me for two years. That's why I didn't go to court. That's how I got that warrant. And then when the judge asked him, I couldn't talk no more. Court was over. But well, I'm gonna try to tell her tomorrow. And uh, pretend uh, you're talking to the judge right now. How are you gonna prove to her you're not a, a thug or a gangbang or whatever? If I was talking to the judge right now, I'd tell her, I'm trying to do better. I know I got a problem. If you send me home and trust me, I'm gonna show you I can work my problem out with my whole family. Cause it ain't just me. I need to, my, I need to get around my family cause they ain't doing better without me. I can't be away from my family and see them every weekend. I need to see them every day, go to school. And help work on my anger, go to therapists, counseling. And I don't even be outside like that no more. Don't smoke no more. None of that. Sounds like you'll be uh, very unhappy if you don't, if you get placement. I am, but I'm, if, it, if it's not what they say it is, I'll probably be all right. But they say if I do good, I'll probably get out in three months, probably four. Mm -hmm. Home by Christmas? No, they told me I was going to stay with them by Christmas, but they said they got a good Christmas. Hey, something to look forward to, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, um, how do you think your mom's uh, going with all this going on? She, she can't take it either. Cause she gotta go to work and school and then come visit me. So she don't get enough sleep and plus she want me home. Can you say my that sister again? Can you say that again and start with my mom? My mom, she can't take me. <laughs> I don't cut that. <laughs> my mom said my mom said she can't take it because my sister sick, I'm in here. She gotta go to work and to school. So she got a lot to do when I'm in here. She can't sleep like that. My sister real sick. And she want me home. And she don't want me in place. Mm -hmm. She's just not going right with her. And I feel like it's my fault. Did your mom say she doesn't want you in placement? Yeah. She said she was gonna try everything not to make me go to place. She was gonna get a lawyer, but she don't wanna pay all that money just for one day. Well, you got a good guy, uh, Don. He's a great the lawyer. Same one from, the same lawyer from last time? Yeah, they say he's one of the better ones. Yeah, he they, is. They say he's the best. He, called, he called Mr. Fleming and then lied too. Yeah, I didn't catch that when, really? when Mr. Fleming was on the stand. He called him in the lab when he told him, so I forgot what he said. Then Mr. Fleming, who was quiet, then he, they kept asking him more questions, then it went on from there. You're right, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I caught him. Called him, yeah. Huh? But let's, let's have you say something about your lawyer again, but just start off with my lawyer. Yeah, my lawyer I had, yeah, he, he cool. He, when he is one of the good ones, and he a nice person. He out for me. And I hope he do get me out of tomorrow. Hope he get me recommend for a uh, house arrest right? and not placement. And he do know what he doing. Mm -hmm. And can you just tell me what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow it's gonna be court. Mm. Mm. I probably got court at eight thirty in the morning. Probably nine. My daddy say he coming, my mama say she coming. My therapist, he probably go well. If he don't, I got two options, either go home or go to placement. Either one ain't bad. I can do placement, there ain't nothing. I ain't weak, I can do that. And I just hope it go well. Got, you answered all our questions really good. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank 
Wait, what's her name? Karen? That's her name. Karen? The one that got all this set up. I would like to thank Karen, because if she wouldn't have been here, nobody would have knew what I've been going through. Thank you, Karen. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the camera crew, too. Yeah, we're terrible. <laughs> we're evil people, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> no, thank you, man. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, how are they treating you? I'm trying to treat them good, because you got to give respect. You got to show respect to get it, but they ain't, they ain't too good either. They talk to us like we like we their kids. But I'm, I'm good with most of them. But they just lied on me, and I got hours like last round last week. They lied on me, and I got hours. They milks be spoiled. It ain't the place to be. I'm sorry, they did what to you? They lied on me, and I got like eight hours. Stayed in my cell the whole day. So they had, you talking about they laid on you? No, they lied, they like lied. they lied, like they told a story. What did they lie about? Yeah, what did they say? They said I cussed out one of the staff members. And no, I'm, the, I'm probably the respectfulest one in here. Never cussed them out, never got loud with them, never argued with them. And then next thing you know, I came back from visit. They was like, you got eight hours. I'm like, I'll get eight hours. And then they put me in the cell. Bummer. Yeah. But it's all right, I'm out here tomorrow. Good, how are you doing? What are you holding there? It's just, oh, okay. Okay, how's it been going here? That's going good. All right. What have you been doing? Relaxing. Playing cards? Yeah, watching TV, playing cards. All right. Have you talked to your mom lately? Yes. What's up with her? Mm -hmm. Doing better. She won't be coming home. OK, now you remember what happened last time when I went to the court? Yeah. What's changed now? That been changed. I've been working on my anger. And me and my mom getting better. I'm going to seeing my dad, too. Okay, because last time your mom, I don't think, was really um, convincing that, you know, you could come home and she'd be able to supervise you. No, she was, but she just didn't know what to do. Now she, she got it all down packed. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to talk with the uh, prosecutor this morning, see if we can't get a result, a plea agreement that uh, um, at least gets you out of here. All right? Mm -hmm. I'll let you know in a little while what the outcome of that is, mm -hmm. and I'll give you my recommendation as to what I think that, uh, that we should do. Mm -hmm. But you're okay entering into some type of plea where you admit to, to one of the charges if they dismiss the other if you go home? Is that something you'd be interested in at least exploring? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to wrap the whole thing up for you today if we can, rather than, you know, wait for a trial. Yeah. Okay, so I'll talk with the prosecutor this morning and see if uh, we can come to some type of agreement. All right, make sure you bring it back to I will. Mm -hmm. Okay, Morris, hang in there. Mm -hmm. See you in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Thanks. What's happening? Because you're jacked out. I told you that. All right, get on the wall. So, um, if you could, hey, can I have you stand over here for me? I want to have a look at you. Um, hello. Tell me why you have so many, uh, scoop over here, right? Why do you have, uh, so many people back here? Because many of the kids that have either court hearings or detention hearings pending this morning have expressed um, that they intend to be quite um, combative and disruptive if the court. I'm sorry, I'm going to start one time. Can you look at her? I need her to look. Oh, sorry. And you know what? Uh, can you uh, put his question in your answer? If you want why? We have a full class yeah. today because. Okay. Uh, we have a full complement of staff up here this afternoon or this morning because we have several kids that have expressed that they're going to be volatile and combative if the court hearing that they're having today doesn't go in the way they feel it should go. So in order to prevent any major problems, we are here and prepared to handle whatever situation may arise. Cool. Thank you.
We've been here before and we've had lots of you know, kind of emotional hearings. Today's a big hearing. You'll find out, I think, you know, what will end up happening with Morris. How do you feel right now? Um, kind of relieved. I do. I'm glad that today is the last day. So what is your what are your thoughts as you're getting ready to walk into the courtroom? What's it like for a parent to know you're getting ready to walk into a courtroom when a big decision is about to be made? Hope for the best. But, um, I hope it's to our favor. Yeah. And to his as advantage. Well as his favor, you know. but, um, so what would you like to hear the judge say? <laughs> you can say what I'd like to hear the judge say. Um, I really can't say. Honestly, I would like to hear the judge say that he is going to uh, a placement that is closer to home so that we can visit. So I know the last time the concern was the distance. Right. Of distance. Right. Anything you'd want to say to Morris, if you could? Because the next time you're going to see him is when he's walking in in shackles. What would you want to tell Morris right now? Oh, um, that I love him and we're going to be with him all the way. Okay. <laughs> What I told him when I seen him last night, you know. What you tell him last night? Let's keep the faith and uh, be truthful and honest, you know. And what you be telling me, you know, mean what you be saying. You know, he told me he was gonna straighten up and do this and do that, you know. A child, I mean, a parent keep saying yes and keep having faith in their child until you know the last results. And this is far from the last result. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Three weeks have passed since Morris's last hearing. In that time, he's remained detained while court specialists have determined what's in his best interest. Today, he'll go back in front of the judge to find out what that is. Okay, keep your hands behind your back. Judge might send me the placement. Or well, she probably might give me house for her. If I was talking to the judge right now, I'd tell him, I'm trying to do better. I know I got a problem. Relax him. If you send me home and trust me, I'm going to show you I can work my problem out with my whole family. Well, Morris, you remember some time back, we went through a detention hearing where you talked about your background, your history, and what you wanted to have happen, correct? Yes. Now, we're not going to go through all of that for today's hearing. All I want to know, Morris, is what you've learned since you've been locked up. Well, when I learned since I've been detained, well, I know how to control my anger. And then I would like to go home with my family. And can the court and can your mother believe you right now when you're saying that? Yes, and my father. Can you look them in the eye and tell them that, that you're going to fully comply with everything? I'm going to fully comply. I'm going to do better. I'm trying to change my life. I don't want to be angry. I got a problem. I admit it. What's your problem? I have an anger problem. That's all I have, Judge. This is Guzik, anything? Morris, you said you couldn't go to your therapy appointments because the therapist came when you were sleeping. She came too early, or he came too early. What part of your smoking marijuana played into that? I don't smoke in the morning time. Well, when do you smoke? Tell you the truth, probably around in the afternoon. How did your running away from home in July until mid-August prevent you from meeting with your therapist? I didn't run away. So your mom I, knew where you were at? No, she didn't know where I was at. She so you did. were a runaway? Her boyfriend see me, my sister see me. I would come home and I would spend the night downstairs. She wouldn't even know it. You're telling me people in your house knew you were sleeping in that house at night when, when there was a runaway report out for you? Is that what you're telling yeah. me? Yeah. And they didn't tell your mother you were in the house? They told her, but she you ain't never seen You said it. enough. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Ruck, anything else? All I would say, Judge, is that being locked up, sitting here, does something, and I believe it has for Morris. I would suggest that we move in increments. We move in increments from where he was before with no real restrictions, just you need to do what we're telling you you're going to do, to now we're going to put a bracelet around your ankle and make sure that you're doing what we say you're gonna do. Before we jump to the most severe conclusion, the recommendation that he be shipped off away from his family and his brothers and sisters who he hasn't seen in a very long time. So I would just ask that the court give some credence to what he said in the stand today. Thank you. 
Judge, we've heard that Morris has done some soul searching while he's been detained for the last three weeks and apparently has seen the light. I'm not sure what light it is he's seen. What I've heard is a person that's still not taking responsibility for anything that he does. He's not going to get services unless this court takes him and puts him in a place where he can receive services, and he desperately needs services. I think that uh, probation's recommendation for placement should be followed. This is a difficult case for me for a lot of reasons. I think that this is a mom, too. I remember from the last hearing, she said, I'm always willing, you know, always willing. And that's, to me, the sign of a really great mother. Uh, but at the same time, she acknowledges and admits that maybe he's not ready to come home. I mean, we've got a young man who's punching holes in the wall. We have a young man who's abusing drugs. And we've got a young man who left home for four or five or six weeks to avoid his mother because he knew there would be a conflict. Um, and so that worries me that he's going to put himself in a situation that's going to become dangerous for him. Um, so for all of those reasons today, the court is going to order that he be uh, placed at Campania Academy. And I'll order that his family participate in family counseling along with him so that he can return home sooner than later. All right. This hearing's adjourned. Thank you. Say goodbye to your parents. I love you too, and I'll see you. We can see you there. Okay. I think Morris is a stinker. Thank you. Good luck. And I think that he gives his mother a run for her money. He's not to the point where he's really a danger to other people. Um, so I don't see him as a hardened criminal at this point in his life. It's my job and the job of the juvenile court system to make sure he doesn't get to that point. Sure. At the end of his hearing, um, <clears throat> the judge made the determination that Morris should be sent to a placement facility to receive you know, programs and services to hopefully help address the underlying issues that landed him in, in juvenile in the first place and to hopefully get the family back to a point of reunification where everyone felt comfortable. A lot of people don't understand what placement is. Is that another form of detention? Is it prison? Can you explain a little bit for viewers who might not understand what placement is when ordered by the juvenile system? Yeah, so again, when you're removing a child, when you make the decision, first of all, that the child's not gonna go home, the question is what do we do with the child, right? I mean, um, yeah, so, so one option is to remain detained in the juvenile court detention center, but that's not designed for long-term um, uh, placement. So very quickly in the evolution of these cases, when the decision's made, the child should not go home for whatever reason, um, we have to decide where is the child going to go? Who can best care for and provide the services uh, that the child needs? Well, the good news is, is that the court takes a pretty good look at, a hard look at what is the, um, what is the appropriate place where they can benefit the most. So one option you mentioned would be a, almost like a prison type of environment for the most serious uh, cases. They, they have what I think at one point was called boys school, which is more of a, uh, a, uh, a lockdown facility with services, but there's also then kind of intermediate facilities, um, like generically called placement facilities. I'm not quite sure why, why the name is, is what it is, but um, where it is less regimented in terms of, um, it would let, look much less like a prison and more like a day camp that a child uh, um, um, spends the night at as well, where they have um, access to individualized uh, education plans, therapy, counseling, parental visitation, um, and uh, really with the idea that this is short term and specifically designed to address the problems with the child and the family. Um, there'll be family counseling involved where the mom comes, the child comes, they kind of work together on these issues. Um, and then hopefully uh, within a very short period of time, then at that point, the child's return back home. As we wrap up Morris's case, um, we again, you know, did some research into um, where Morris is today. And, and I'll read you what we found. Um, at the age of 21, he was convicted of robbery and served time in prison. He was released in 2015. And then in April of 2022, 
uh, he was arrested on a firearm possession charge and a charge and sentenced to 24 months in prison and two years of supervised release. Does this surprise you at all? Or is this something that you often see because some of the kids you represent are so young when you represent them that they still have you know, several years left of their teenage life and young adult life um, to kind of work through whatever issues they're working through and they oftentimes end up back in trouble again. Yeah, and, and I, I think specifically when we talk about Morris and, uh, you know, that's uh, obviously disappointing to hear and uh, um, you often then reflect and ask yourself, are we doing a good job as a, as a juvenile court system and accomplishing the goal of trying to um, keep kids uh, on the right track? Um, and, you know, it doesn't surprise me in the sense that despite our best efforts, some kids aren't just making mis a mistake that gets them arrested and involved in the court system and we correct the mistake. Um, there, unfortunately, the mistake in some cases is, is more of a symptom of the environment that they're in and the, in the community that they're in. Um, and, you know, we can reprimand them for the mistake, but we can't always change what their life is um, outside of the court back at home. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's the hard part that we struggle with is that, um, you know, Morris got got punished uh, a little bit for, for what he had done, but, you know, we send him back in the same friend groups and the same uh, community and the same day-to-day uh, -day living that, that he had beforehand. And there's not much that the court can do to remedy all of those things that uh, that are influencing a child of that age and if those things aren't you know if those things aren't fixed and if the child like Morris you know still stays in those uh, runs in those circles then you're going to get the same or worse um, um, things happening yeah